Hello and welcome to this new careers podcast from Wild Planet Trust. We are a conservation charity based in the southwest that work locally and globally to help halt species decline. Now I am Ollie, I'm producing the podcast and I'm joined by our ongoing hosts, Matt and Joe. And well, we're going to introduce them to you in this episode and we'll be moving forward with them as we get into well, the next item. So... We'll start off going round the table. We'll start with you, Matt. Okay. So, who are you? So, Matt Lewis. And, um, well, what do you do? I'm an engagement manager here at Paint and Zoo. And what is the strangest job you've ever had? First job, shoveling mushroom compost into sacks for sale at a garden centre. <laughs> fair enough. It was not the worst job. Not the worst job? No, no, they get worse than that. No? Okay, fair enough. Okay, Joe. So, who are you and what do you do? So I am Joe. I am engagement officer at Paint and Zoo. Um, weirdest job for me. I've had really boring jobs. Um, narrow boat cleaner. Okay. Yeah. Like, I okay. think it's probably okay. the a bit weirdest. more niche as well. So we've got narrow boat cleaner, shoveling, <laughs> mushroom, mushroom compost. compost. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I'm Ollie. I'm the producer of the podcast. I do all the digital stuff here at Paint and Zoo, and for the trust. Um, Strangest job I've ever had. Again, not that strange. Not as strange as shoveling no, mushroom compost, but I one. was a cleaner at Weatherspoons for okay. a time, and well, I suppose tour guide was. No, I know. Oh. Um, I was a ghost show scarer. Right. Okay. That's so a good I would, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Jump out and scare yeah. people on the ghost tours at. You would scare me. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> that might come in handy. One query about narrowboat cleaning: Do you get narrow brooms and mops? No, you just no. use normal <laughs> cleaning equipment. I wasn't very good at it, I got fired. Uh, okay. <laughs> but I was only 15. So. Fair enough. Fair. Narrow tools, you know, I don't know. It makes sense, it makes sense. So, we have started a podcast. So, with that intro bit done, obviously, why have we started this podcast? I'll defer to you, Matt. So, we get queries from people who want to work at the zoo. Some mm. of it's to do with wanting to be a zookeeper, but we also get inquiries from other people who are interested in careers in conservation and it's a lot of the information that we're giving is the same for each for each person that, that mm. often we're trying to provide the same information and it seems a lot more fun to do it as a podcast so we can talk to more people and hopefully inspire them to get go into a career in conservation yeah and i suppose as well it's such a broad topic as well and there are as we'll go forward and find out with the podcast, there are a lot of jobs that you wouldn't expect as well. So this is kind of a good place to well, put it all together so people might uh, yeah. hear some things that they don't expect. Yeah, because when we're getting the queries, I think a lot of people think, right, okay, I want to be a zookeeper, I want to work at the zoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But actually, we've got a whole host of people we're hoping to talk to during these, this podcast series who've got interesting careers interesting backgrounds sometimes they've taken unusual routes to get here i think that's it there's no definitive route into this kind of job which you know we just think about a few stuff here and none of them have got the same route in so we we can't ultimately we can't answer the question quickly and succinctly when we're asked so this is a good way of rounding it all up hopefully but i'm also hoping we're going to uncover some good stories as well Mm. along the way so i think that some of our (coughs) <coughs> and we will be talking to zookeepers, but some of our keepers and other staff are going to have really interesting um, information that we can pass on to the people who listen to the podcast. Good, good. So people can basically expect from this podcast that we're going to be talking to a range of different people. So not just zookeepers, as you said, we're going to be talking to some people way high up at the top in the zoo world. Mm. We'll be talking to, well, obviously us as well. Um is there anyone you're most looking forward... Well, is there anyone that you're wanting to talk to specifically? Yeah, we haven't officially asked people yet. So. Not yet. <laughs> so if we can, once they've heard this first episode and we can convince them to come on, <laughs> who is it that you're kind of most looking forward to talking to or you'd most like to Joe, talk to? Joe, I know you've got something interesting lined up, so... What, you think the first one? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, okay. The, yeah, the only person we've officially asked is um, our chief science officer, um, Kirsten, and she's, I mean, she's done a bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, not to do too many spoilers, but she was a keeper at mm-hmm. one point. Um, she's got a PhD. She's worked right at the top because she was head of Biaza at one point, which is the British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So she's she's gone away and done that and then come back to, to Paynton. So, you know, she's she's 
got a full range and yeah. I think she's just got a really interesting Yeah, so she's one of the head honchos yeah. here at the zoo and yet she's done a lot of different jobs yeah. on the way up. So should we get I'm really looking forward to talking to some of our keepers. I just think that they've often got interest in uh Stories about the choices they made, like why they ended up working with certain animals, mm. like what are the skills that uh, that they have, and what why are they a keeper? It's quite a hard job to do. It's got a lot of sacrifices. Uh, so why do they end up doing that job? So I'm really looking yeah. forward to chatting to them. The other one I think that's going to be quite good, hopefully, is if we can get one of our um, some of our people that work in our overseas conservation projects yes. as well, because it's not something yeah. that we shout about enough. But we have people employed by the trust working in in Sulawesi and you know yeah. on, the, on the on the ground yeah. actually doing conservation work. Yeah, so as Wild the Planet the Trust we actually have projects in Indonesia which are trying to change the way that they that people behave. We're working mm-hmm. with local communities. So if we can talk to them, that would be magic yeah. to find out yeah. what sort of a background how do you end up working in Indonesia. Yeah, actually on on a yeah. conservation on project. On a conservation project yeah. overseas. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. I'm hoping at some point I can get over there and do some video. <laughs> but we will see. We will see. But big yes, budget dreams. So big budget dreams, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, if anyone wants to sponsor the podcast, let us know. Um, okay, so that's a little bit about the podcast and what you can expect from us and who we're going to be talking to, some of the people that we'd like to talk to. So, let's talk about us. Um, obviously, we sit around this table. We've all taken different routes to get here. I know that my story is going to be completely different to yours because I'm in a different role entirely, content creation, and you're both in education. Uh, but Matt, you trained as a marine biologist to begin with, didn't you? And yeah. obviously you've kind of changed, I wouldn't say changed directions, it's still education. And That's a bit that of a twist thing, on But a bit of a twist on a theme. Yeah. So I wanted to be a vet when I was at school, but I didn't get the grades. And then okay. I studied marine biology at Bangor University. It was a brilliant course, it was really interesting. But when I came out of that, I think after an MSc as well, I expected to be something like a fisheries protection officer. Mm-hmm. And I did. I went and worked as a scientist on fishing boats, deep sea fishing boats for a, a short time. But um, th- that came to an abrupt end as a career when the boat sank, but that's a story for another time. Yep. Uh, but when really, even before the boat sank, I'd already decided I didn't want to carry on working offshore. Yeah. I didn't like living on a fishing boat. And you just were spending a lot of time waiting to get back to your friends. And I, I think as a career, I hadn't expected that drawback as a marine biologist. Um, but I already decided that I wanted to work in education with in an aquarium at the time, uh, talking to kids about wildlife. So that yeah. really was what pulled me in. And I went from working on deep sea fishing boats to working at a big public aquarium. Okay. So um, then I started out doing, as a presenter, doing talks at tanks and uh, like the big dive shows yeah. and then I've worked in a number of different aquariums, zoos and I've worked for myself as well. I've been self-employed taking animals into schools and now I've been at Wild Planet Trust at Paint and Zoo for four years. Okay so when obviously that change from being on fishing boats to then being a presenter yeah what kind of how did that start what did you do to kind of get into the presenter role was that just looking for jobs and then working your way up from there or was it kind of specifically it was exactly that so uh, i have a bachelor's degree in marine biology i have a master's degree in marine fisheries science so so that was the sort of qualification background to it and that that did help me have the knowledge when i went to the aquarium but i didn't need need it and when i worked at the aquarium then i started getting the skills in just how to talk to people how Mm -hmm. to make them interested in wildlife and how to try and make it relevant to them and then over the years i've worked basically either doing the talks or managing the talks to try and get people interested in wildlife and and specifically now in conservation how we actually try and save those species okay okay fair enough so (coughs) Let you have a cough. Thanks. <laughs> we'll come to you then, Joe. So, obviously, we've discussed things before setting up the podcast, and I know that you kind of had your foot in the door in the zoo world from an early start, so a little bit yeah. different to Matt. So what what journey did you take? What did that look like? Okay, so mine, mine's fairly straight line in terms of career progression, really. Mm-hmm. I've always worked in zoos or conservation. Um, so mine was the traditional thing of being sort of 16, 17, not really knowing what I want to do. I was going to do geology because I like volcanoes and I thought that would be quite <laughs> fun. Um, but um, in the summer between my AS and A levels, I had a placement at Twycross Zoo um, 
working within the education department. Yeah. And I was only there for four weeks and it was just doing a little research project and kind of helping with um, the talks and things. Um, and it was during those four weeks that I was basically told in no uncertain terms that I should most definitely not to be doing geology at university and clearly I should be working with animals. <laughs> was that the geologist trying to put you off that? No, that was my it? biology teacher and okay. people at the zoo. So like okay. the, everybody was saying, why are you not working with animals? But I was the same. I wanted to be a vet and ultimately to be a vet, you have to put in so much extra time to get work experience yeah. um, because that many people apply, you've got to be that person at the top and I wasn't prepared to do that. Yeah. And so when I abandoned that idea... I, I didn't know zoology existed as a as an option. In this podcast series, we're hoping to... Vets will be one of the group we'll be mm. hoping to speak yeah. to, I think. And it'd be interesting to chat to them about how single-minded you have to be. You know, how you get the experience to end up as a zoo vet, which is yeah. a pretty elite yeah. career. Um, and it's interesting that both of us made the choice to... Or had the choice taken away from us, <laughs> in my case. <laughs> but, but basically aren't vets when we thought we would want to be. I yeah. think I'm a better presenter than I would have been a vet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I think ultimately it's when you think, I want to work with animals, and you only see yeah. two options. But there's loads of options. Yeah. So just doing zoology obviously gives you a much broader one. So did that at uni, but as part of uni, I did a placement year here at mm -hmm. Payton. Um, and I'm one of the many placement students that, that has never really left Payton, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I worked back at Twycross Zoo in education for a bit. And I worked back down here as a keeper as well for a bit because I felt like it was something that you should you should do. Yeah. And it and it's helped me just being a keeper just for a short time has helped mm. me with Why? what I do now. Like the experience or what? Um. Yeah. And I think it's just the, the keepers are such an integral part of of a zoo. Yeah. They are like the gods of the zoo yeah. almost, aren't they? Um. Especially to the public. So having that little insight and being able to talk to people about what it's like to be a keeper, and when I need the keepers to help me with something, I know what their day involves. I know the stresses yeah. and the pressures that they're under. Yeah. So it means I know I'm not asking for anything that yeah. isn't going to be doable. And I also totally understand if they say, well, I'm really sorry, we haven't got time. Because yeah. I get it. I know that they're busy. Um, so it's a big help. Um, but ultimately, I wanted to be back in education. So on a... On a a loop round a different conservation charity, I ended up back here again within okay. education. Okay. So I've been here five and a half, coming up six years now, actually. Okay, so all kind of similar. I've been here for about four years as well. I suppose for me it was a bit different. I didn't have my foot in the door, nor did I do anything kind of yeah. animally or marine or anything like that. I came out of Sixth Form College not knowing what I wanted to do decided that I was good at media studies and went to be one of those media students. Um, I studied at Falmouth, which was great and definitely recommend it. But um, when I got back from that, I was working various little jobs like working at Spoons and then doing Kent's Cavern as well. I was a tour guide by this time because I came back every summer. Um, and then it was a case of I had a choice to make. There was I'd succeeded in my application to become a Basically a salesman, but a right. cold call salesman. I'd be in a call centre selling mortgage endowments to people who really didn't want them. And I didn't like the idea of that. And I'm sure if I went for that, obviously the team would have been great. The people would have been lovely, but it just wasn't for me considering yeah. my media background. So I saw that the zoo was hiring for someone to do digital content production. And I took a chance on the interview, knowing that I had one job secure... I then went, yeah. um, I've got an interview over here, I can't hold on to that, I need to take a chance on this. So I took a chance on the interview and here I am four years later. Okay. Fun. Are you glad you made the choice? Of course, yes. yes. I mean, like... There's a load of people who are going to have perfectly good careers as mortgage yes. advisors. Oh, for sure. But at the end of the day, it's finding something that, that satisfies you, that yes. allows you your creative outlet. Mm -hmm. And something you're good at, right? I think as well for creatives, I can only speak for myself and some of the people that I went to university with. It's quite hard to kind of break into that creative space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sensing you use this word creative as though it's a judgment that you are creative, we are education, so therefore you are better and we are boring. No, is no, that not I'm, not I'm not saying I'm that just you're boring. I think you'll I'm find I'm very creative. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> asleep behind the camera. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. But obviously, before we properly started working together, yeah. um, 
obviously you check some of the videos that we did beforehand, yeah. but obviously since COVID-19 and all the lockdowns, we've been working pretty much on educational content. Yeah. So you come up with the content, I create the content, and it kind of works quite well. And it's here we magic. are doing a podcast now. Magic for us. Like when we couldn't talk to people face to face, we could still get... Mm to them and talk to them about wildlife, but whether that was actually just keeping their interest in the zoo and trying to get their interest up in wildlife or whether it's actually passing on conservation messages. It's been digital media that's allowed us to do yeah, that. exactly. And I think, going back to what you asked before, was it worth yeah. making this choice? I think for sure. Yeah. Because one, I get to do my kind of creative outlet. Yeah. I get paid to do that. Mm. And... I get to work with the animals and keepers and things like that. And I get to work telling people and advocating for well, the messages yeah. and advocating for the animals. So I definitely wouldn't do anything different if I were to go back, which is quite nice. It's a good way to be. Yeah. What about you? Would Would you say that you made... Well, I know that you will say that you made the right <laughs> choice, obviously. But would, if you went back and did it again... Um, would you do it differently? Would you maybe study something different? Would you do something else? Yeah, I think I'd do everything differently in okay. some ways. I wonder if when I was at school whether I really worked out what I wanted to do. I mean, the marine biology is a classic case. that um, It was a really interesting course, but I don't think I'd clearly worked out what I wanted to do and what I was good at. And I've been lucky that I've ended up doing something that I enjoy mm -hmm. and that I think I'm okay at. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I've landed by luck. <laughs> but ultimately oh, you shouldn't be scared to change though should you, you no no i think matter. that's one of the important things like all of us have kind of actually i mean i i retrained as a teacher a few years ago that was not going to suit me it, when i started the course i should have known i had done you know i'd worked around teaching a lot before yeah. but because i needed a job i retrained as a teacher and it was quite quickly clear that it didn't satisfy me and it was uh and the organization that you require for day-to-day -day teaching yeah. is just not my forte no, and that's fair enough and I suppose you've got that kind of background of you did one thing and then it didn't suit you or you didn't like it and you wanted to change and yeah. you did and then you didn't necessarily like that but you wanted to be in the education space so again you made that change yeah so what would your kind you're of making me be really fussy well <laughs> some of the edits on the videos can be um, but no, like, would you say to someone who's looking to start their career path? Yeah. Is your kind of advice to them like, look, it's okay to change? Is that kind of yeah. something that? Yes, you'd very say? much. So I think a lot of people change careers now. But I think when you're going to study, like when you're leaving school and you're trying to decide, is uh, partly not to rush mm -hmm. and to work out what you're good at, what you really want to do, like whether and. At day to day what you want to do whether you want to be sitting at a desk or whether you want to be out and about whether you like dealing with people which I very much do or whether you would prefer to be working on your own and working out your what you really want to do hmm. and and what what you're good at trying to get that ma magic marriage between what hmm. you're good at and what you want to do and what will give you the lifestyle that you want as well yeah I think I was quite lucky in that I kind of was looking for something and then took the chance on that interview and then boom here I am doing something that I love doing and I get that creative outlet and I get to create videos and content for a, pretty, a really good cause as well. What's, uh, what's the best bit about your job? I think best bit about my job is I get to work with the animals Okay. and I don't have to pick up the poo. Right. Okay. It's great. So um, you get to go in and film and do the glorious yes, bit. So I get and some of my friends have told me they're pretty envious of this like we were in with, we filmed a video in with the red pandas and obviously they've had cubs. So I get to go in when we've just had cubs, the red pandas, once they're old enough that I'm not going to terrify them, I can pop in with the camera, yeah. get the footage and I get up close. Like obviously we're not directly interacting with them. We're not stroking the panda cubs or anything like that, but I get to be there in those moments where you get to interact at a distance with one day creatures. old zebra foal oh. yeah, like one thing. day old zebra foal <laughs> in, in fact not even one day no, hours it, old it was yeah it was that morning like we old. walked up there and they were carrying the placenta <laughs> to bag. the bio waste <laughs> yeah um, okay. so it was pretty much like I was there directly okay. after that and got some footage of the zebra starting to suckle which is 
Well, it's pretty special. I mean, yeah. you don't get to do that very often. And obviously, wildlife filmmakers and wildlife documentarians, they're in the world waiting for this shot. Mm. I get these shots handed to me on a plate, which is fantastic. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'd love to go and do that in the world yeah. and wait for the shots. And sometimes I have to. But I get so many more moments like that yeah. when I'm filming here, which is Magic. lovely. Yeah. I'm quite jealous of you because you get to indulge the artistic side of your personality. I think that we as communicators are often just dealing with like day to day face to face with mm. people and that's magic is one of the best bits of my job is dealing with people but I do like the fact that you can have to think about how you're going to set up a shot, how you're going to light it, how you're going to do the sound and that that creative side of your personality gets to be used. So I think that's one thing that stands about your job. Oh, I definitely sound very lucky in what I do. Joe, so what's the best bit about your job? I don't know. Filming videos with me. Working well, with us. Well, that's yes. the thing. You're, you're just saying about Ollie gets to do yeah. his creativity, but I enjoy the fact that I get to be creative. You, yeah. you know, you're busy saying we're not creative. Yeah. I enjoy the fact that I can come up with a video and I can creatively think about what I would like and I know I can go to Ollie and Ollie will make it into yeah. what is in my brain yeah. on a screen. I mean, I, I am a creative outside of work. I yeah. perform. That's mm. what I do. I do shows and singing and things like that. So I enjoy the fact that as part of my job, although it's not in the same way as doing a musical, say, I still get to perform as part of my Which, job. Okay. I find yeah. quite funny because outside of this job, you perform yeah. and you are creative and outside of my job... I teach. <laughs> okay. Right. So I teach kids how to do what I do and yeah. that kind of thing. So I think, yeah, it's quite <laughs> quite a funny point just to dwell on that. But Matt, what about you? What's your favourite part of your job? I do like just dealing with kids and uh, seeing them light up when you can actually give them an insight into mm. an animal here. Like as a zoo person, I'm most interested in the animals when they're in the wild. So trying to show people how that animal would be in the wild, like something about it, and just seeing them, like, yeah, just improving their day. Mm. And the other flip side of that is I, I do like the performing side mm. of it. I'm surprised I do. Like, I'm not a very showy person, but I get a big buzz when we've done a talk or something, yeah. and it ends, and you walk away. I get really nervous beforehand sometimes, but then when we walk away, I, I, basically, that's great. Yeah. Just take more persuading, don't you? Yeah. Do the full performance. <laughs> and more pacing I'll get you beforehand. There. I'll get you there. <laughs> get ready for the big show. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, thinking about, obviously we'll wrap up shortly, but if you weren't doing what you do now, yep. what would you be, job-wise? Can I get to choose, like, if I went back quite a long time, I'd be a dentist, probably. A dentist? Yeah, dentist. I know. Because okay. I'm quite scientific. I'm quite good like at fine manipulation of things. Mm -hmm. I like people, okay, which a lot of dentists don't. <laughs> but I My dentist is very brusque. Okay. She's a scary lady. <laughs> and My I... dentist is very uh. clinical. <laughs> Sorry, okay. carry on. And uh, I think it would be quite an interesting way to work, uh, having Ooh, worked no. in... I couldn't worked. imagine staring in someone's mouth like their tongue moving around would just freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should have been a dentist. Okay. So if I wasn't here... I'd be a dentist. What would you be? Well, um, <laughs> I've always thought I'd be a good estate agent. Oh, okay, right, okay, yeah. yeah. And I don't know whether I think because I'm good with people. Yeah. But I'm also really nosy, and I right. love looking I was around say, houses. Is that the nosy part of you coming out? Because <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm not good enough at persuading. I like looking people. at houses. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would be a good estate agent. Okay. Because I don't know, just like. I've met a lot of bad estate agents having bought houses in the past and yeah. I tend to look at what they do and go, I could do a better job than that. <laughs> Any estate agents watching this? I accept your challenge, <laughs> zoo lady. I don't know. I did, I did genuinely want to work within TV and film, but obviously getting into that is Whoa, yeah, really, really difficult. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, I wanted to be the next Kate Humble. And maybe I will be one day. Maybe. We'll get you there. Okay. We'll get you there. We'll start a... Well, we've got a podcast, we've got videos, yeah, exactly. we've got all sorts. We'll get, get you it, there. If I get it out there enough, someone right. from the BBC will notice. So, Ollie, uh, what about you? If you weren't here at the zoo filming um, us, what would you do? I'd probably be selling mortgage endowment. <laughs> okay. Okay. What would you want to do? What would I want to be doing? Uh, filmmaking, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's 
kind of where my passion lies and that's what I get to do at the moment. But if I wasn't doing it here, I'd probably be doing as many other videographer, yeah. weddings, all that kind of stuff, yeah. okay. um, freelance bits and bobs. And I think that's eventually the goal as well. I mean, one day I'll be able to do documentaries okay. off my own back. Yeah. Um, as a filmmaker. Yeah. So, filmmaker. Well, if we're talking dreams, I'd be a West End star, obviously. Would you? But, um, <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think I've left it a bit late. You never know. Well, Matt's changed time and time again, so yeah, but you can... Yeah. Breaking into the West End show world is okay, even harder enough. than being in t- on TV, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think one magic point yeah. is that when you're young, it's easier to change. The older you get, and I'm at an age now where I've got family and things, it's mm. more difficult. Like when you're young, in your 20s as well, then that, that's the point to be trying to find what you're good at, yes. what makes you happy, and then it's easier than changing when you're 47. Fair play. Solid advice. <laughs> um, I suppose that kind of brings us to one of my final things. And you touched on it there, Matt. Like, what careers advice would you give your 15 year old self? Joe, do you want to go first? I was going to say, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think mine would probably be take every opportunity that comes your way. So, um, you were saying about you need to do something that you enjoy. Well, you're only going to find out what you enjoy by going and trying things mm. and, and being out and about and, and there. So for me, in terms of getting the jobs I've got now, the only reason I've I've got the jobs I've got at Painton is because while I was down here as a placement student, I was helping in education with yeah. their kids' clubs. I was going and helping the mammal department chop food if they were short that day. So I was just making myself useful. Yeah. And then when jobs come up, I was in people's minds. The only reason I got my job at Twycross is because I did my voluntary thing and then I went back and volunteered while I was working at Morrison's as a Christmas temp. You know, I, <laughs> that paid bills, but it didn't fulfill my yeah. my enjoyment. So I volunteered. In fact, while I was working full time in education at Twycross, I was in on my days off as a volunteer keeper. <laughs> because so when, that made me get a keeper job. So, you know. When we were but, chatting about this podcast, one of the things that came across we were talking about was you you talk about being willing, like mm. basically showing willing. Like it's not about asking somebody for work experience so much as like just being busy, trying to help with things, like going yeah. in and if you're if you can see a chance to help with something, actually doing that and just seeing whether you enjoy it, whether yeah. you're useful, like basically making making yourself useful, isn't it? And we've all had jobs, like we've all done jobs as so Saturday jobs, whether it's shoveling mushroom yeah. compost or uh, cleaning up in weather spoons. I say cleaning up because I imagine it's more cleaning up than cleaning. Um, yes. Right. <laughs> Especially after carnival night. That right. was a horrible okay. trip. But with all those things, you know, it's just keeping busy, trying out different things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think to touch on that as well, like obviously making yourself known, giving yourself the opportunities and putting yourself forward mm-hmm. to kind of be noticed and be that name uh, that people think of when new jobs come up. Yeah. I think if we're talking advice for my 15 year old self um i'm very aware that my manager dave he took a chance on my abilities mainly because i think i was the only one who came to the interview having basically done a video about the zoo straight off the bat because you could you could show that you had thought about what you wanted to do in that job like you could show that you could Partly you could do that job, but you'd thought about it, right? So rather yes. than walking in, and when careers advisors are talking to you about having experience that shows your skills, mm-hmm. at school it can sometimes seem a bit like a, a strange thing, like to write a sentence, but being able to show that you've thought about what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, I would important. definitely say put your best foot forward. And well, for me, especially with what I do, it's go above and beyond for those kind of opportunities. Just show up and make sure that you do everything that you can to be like look at me yeah. i can yeah. do what you want me to do and i like you say i've thought about it and this is what i could bring um i think that's extremely important especially creatively yeah, um, yeah. I suppose i mean if somebody asked you like if you're filling a job application for this job but then you need to show that you have the experience and the skills or 
or, mm-hmm. or skilled. Yeah. The experience or the skills to do the job. And for you, when you were applying for this job, the same that when somebody would have looked at your application and you need to demonstrate that that you can do it. And it's not just writing the sentence, it's actually using, like thinking about how you've shown initiative, thinking mm-hmm. about how you, you know, a good example of how you showed some enthusiasm. Like with me, when I'm talking about wildlife, how can I show that I'm enthusiastic about wildlife? I, yeah. We get a lot of people through the education department that are just starting out. So they've just yeah. graduated and things like that. And the ones that stand out are the ones that have done that little bit extra. Yeah. And especially the ones that turn up to the interview and have clearly really put the time in to plan it and think about it. And they're the ones that stand out ultimately. Yeah. So if you've not done anything extra, mm. it, you know, it doesn't have to be directly tied into what you're applying for, but just yeah. having something that stands you out above everybody else. Uh, my advice to my 15 year old self would have been to, to take any opportunities to travel or to do different stuff. Like I, I have had the chance to go to, to Borneo, to Africa, to the Falkland Islands, nearly to the Antarctic with my jobs. And that's been amazing, and I've loved that. But also, the more serious advice would be that to to stop and think, and plan, like where do I want to go? What do I want to do? Like to re- reassess, basically. Mm. So reassess. Don't be afraid to change yeah. at yeah. some point. Maybe take a different path. That doesn't Obviously. mean you chop and change every no, five minutes exactly. and never but, settle down. But it does mean that you think right. That is something that I would like to do. I do not want to be a classroom teacher. I want to do this and okay. then make it happen. Let's wrap it up. So we've touched on this already. So Joe, why don't you go ahead and tell us who's going to be in the next episode and what that episode's theme is going to be. Okay, so our next episode will be with Kirsten, who is our chief scientific officer. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll get a full background from her and really find out how she got to be the, the the top of her game I guess really being um being one of the top people here at the zoo yeah she's quite an inspiring woman in science yeah. as well right so yeah she used to, she was my mentor when I was a placement student okay. so um, I'm still a little bit intimidated by it I'm not gonna lie <laughs> um, but it'll be good I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to talking to her um, and we're gonna make sure we align that with um, International Women in Science Day so that you know we can really yes. highlight the fact that we've got this inspirational woman. Um, right at the top of our organisation. And I should say that our Chief Operating Officer is also a woman, just to okay. really yep. and highlight no that. No doubt we will at some point be talking to her as well. Hopefully, yeah. Um, Not that she knows it yet. No, no. We'll be sending <laughs> out those emails after this episode. So, obviously, this episode is our January episode. Uh, the next episode with Kirsten will be coming out in Feb, and that's on February the 11th. The podcast will be out uh, monthly on every second Friday of the month. And, yeah, you can expect to hear more about the careers at Paint and Zoo, at Nuki Zoo, and at the Trust throughout these episodes. And we hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.